so hi, my name is uh, Randy McLeod. I'm a user space uh, tech lead at Wind River Linux. I've been doing this for more than a decade now. And I'm going to talk about some work that a, a student and I did uh, uh, last summer on uh, improving the BitBig scheduler. I'm going to make, uh, I decided to add some pictures of Pokemon as an entertainment uh, thing. My local Pokemon expert moved out, out uh, who happened to be my son, moved out of my house a while ago, but uh, he left behind all of these uh, Pokemon cards, which uh, you people may be familiar with. I'm not an expert. I pick some nice images. Hopefully they make some sort of sense. Uh, so I'm going to turn my video off and continue. Um, all right. Okay. So the general outline of the talk is what's the problem? Why does uh, Bitmic need to be improved and made psychic? Uh, uh, psychic uh, is a type of Pokemon. So there's a connection there. I'm going to talk about the solution we came up with. There may be other solutions or better solutions, but this is one we're using. Uh, I'll talk about the implementation in the scheduler and what Ash and Pokemon Trainer has to do with BitBig. Um, I'll talk about the results, which I refer to as watching the Pokemon fight. Uh, and then I'll talk about uh, future work. So um, the problem we're trying to solve, as uh, Ross sort of mentioned uh, earlier, is slowing down uh, your BitBig build but not as much as slowing it down using the limiting the number of tasks on the parallel make uh, variables allow you to do. We want it to be slow to maximize throughput, but not for low system. And so if you're just adding the uh, tasks and parallel make, you can easily uh, put too much work onto a system. And we've seen particularly on the Yocto auto builders, but also in other environments that uh, interactivity can really degrade and cause problems if you're trying to run other tasks on the machine, such as QAs, and in fact, you know, several builds. So uh, some people think of BitBake as a slow fork bomb. Um, if you're running two or three tasks, you've got two or three bombs. And if you're running uh, QA tests, then it's even more stressful. Um, so the restrictions we have uh, and some of the goals we had were it should work on older distros, so probably not containers. You can't have sudo, just like uh, normal rules for BitBake. And C groups could be used, but you need a root to set them up, so they were not really considered. Uh, we, our goal is to not only uh, um, make limit the CPU usage, but hopefully help IO latency as well. And it, ideally, it, the solution should be independent of the number of cores, a memory subsystem, and storage uh, subsystem on the machine that you're using. Uh, so I came across uh, this uh, um, PSI or uh, pressure stall information uh, several years ago, and it seemed like a good fit for uh, the problems that Yocto was having. So let's just talk about what what uh, uh, proc pressure, uh, CPU, I/O, and memory tell you about your system. Uh, so there are files in the proc uh, file system, and if you look at the uh, red uh, numbers down here, you see that there are um, indications of contention for a given resource. So if you're having too many CPU uh, tasks, then there'll be contention for CPU, and you'll see that the uh, number uh, the numbers will be non-zero. Uh, so the data you're given from the kernel feature is the average contention over uh, 10 seconds as a percentage. So in this case, it's 82%, and a uh, average over 60, an average over 30. And the total is also um, an ins a cumulative count of how many microseconds of contention the system has seen since it's booted up. Uh, so as an example, if you uh, run a stress tool, which just launches a bunch of uh, CPU uh, consumption tasks uh, or IO or VM tasks, uh, that's what uh, was run to generate the data that's shown here. And I'll show you the graph that uh, helps you to understand things. Uh, so the purple line is a, a incremental uh, difference every, every hundredth of a second. Uh, the red line is the average 10, and uh, yellow and green are the average for longer periods. So clearly the average over 10 seconds is kind of not uh, not very good. And so we ended up using our own uh, uh, calculations for uh, the work we did on BitBig. Uh, so this is the um, uh, boot chart, uh, build chart that um, Ross showed earlier. Um, so over on the right is the full uh, chart showing the uh, notorious uh, Rust bottleneck down near the bottom. 
Um, but what we added is the, the um, part is the uh, star here, which is some sort of Pokemon badge, I think, um, showing it with the line, the average over 10 seconds, and then the blue, the instantaneous difference or the difference uh, from the last measurement time. Uh, so you can see that the CPU in, in the build is overloaded, uh, but there are times when there isn't a lot of contention and, and still times when there is substantial contention. So our goal was to uh, minimize, give you a lever if you wanted to minimize that contention. The solution was fairly simple. It's you know tens or hundreds of lines of code. Um, but the, the essence is basically uh, one or two lines uh, in Bitmix uh, run queue scheduler. You check to see if there's at least one task active. And then if there is, you check to see if you exceed the max pressure. And if, you, if you're above the threshold, you just return none and a bit that goes and uh, waits for other tasks to complete or, or uh, comes back and that and call checks again to see if uh, the pressure has subsided. Uh, so we introduced three tuning variables for CPU IO and memory. Um, and we found CPU seems to be the most effective. Obviously, BitBig is mostly doing um, uh, compilation and not CPU intensive. Uh, of course, it's writing a lot of data as well, but only as a result of compilation. So if you deal with one, you deal with the other. Uh, so the numbers here, again, are in units of microseconds of contention in the last uh, second or so. And the typical values are somewhere between one and 10,000. Um, and it really depends on what your goal is and how nice you want to be to the system as a whole or to other users on your system. Uh, so this is a graph showing um, an unregulated build. It's the, the x-axis is the time and the y-axis is the CPU pressure. Um, I'm using the uh, average over 10 seconds, I believe. Um, so you can see that we've uh, the red is uh, regulated, and we see we've uh, substantially reduced the, uh, the CPU contention or uh, pressure, but we haven't eliminated it. And I'll talk more about that um, in the coming slides. Um, so it's another uh, graph showing uh, if you change that uh, CPU max uh, pressure from um, zero up to about 10,000, you do, in fact, uh, slow down the build. Uh, so it normally takes 34 uh, hundred seconds, can you know almost double in time if you give a really low number. So you want to be aware of that and choose something that's nice but not too nice. Uh, so um, this it was merged, uh, I think, for Langdale, and uh, people have found it useful. Um, certainly, the uh, larger builds that uh, um, people like Martin Jensen and so on would. Uh, usually or often encounter an out of memory situation are far less likely to do so. Uh, but the problem isn't solved and I'm gonna talk more in, in a minute about what else we could do. Um, one of the tests we did was doing three builds at once and uh, three builds at once actually finishes slightly faster, which um, uh, is a bit of a surprise. Uh, you're basically not avoiding overloading the system. I don't think the system was swapping, but uh, I didn't look into the actual um, reason for finishing faster that was just something we noticed. Uh, the, the more important thing is that uh, we have sort of many months of um, measuring high latency events on the Yacht Auto Builder, which would cause problems when we are doing tests, and that those high latency events and subjectively the high latency of the uh, IO subsystem has improved dramatically in the sort of uh, Currently, we see maybe one or two a month, whereas before we saw 10 or more high latency events per week. Uh, so we might lower the, uh, you know, try to make things even better. We'll uh, say, see on that. I did run uh, Ross's Sato build uh, just this morning on my uh, machine. It uh, takes about 32 minutes and 25 seconds. And if you turn on um, the uh, pressure regulation for CPU, at the value of a thousand, I think I used. It's a eight seconds faster, which is really on, on a scale of 32 minutes is about the same time. So you're not giving up much as long as there's no one, no one else making use or demanding uh, resources on the system. Uh, so what else is there to do? Um, I was hoping to have some of this done by now, but uh, their work has taken precedent. Uh, precedent sorry. 
Uh, so we want to teach the build tools, uh, Ninja and Make, uh, also to be psychic, to uh, use this uh, pressure indicator as a way to regulate the creation of new tasks so that the uh, chart we showed back here, uh, where all the red hopefully subside even more. Um, there we go. Um, we we'll probably have some work uh, to, uh, to do on improving the averaging that uh, BitBake is using. It's pretty crude, you know, it, make it work and then ship it, that algorithm. We can uh, add a test case for uh, ensuring that nothing regresses. Um, as you can see, once we get Make and Ninja um, uh, regulated, we uh, will have a sort of thundering herd problem where all of the Makes and, and Ninjas will uh, pause when things get too busy. And then once things subside, all of the things will start again. So we'll need to randomly start things you know, over a second or two. Uh, there's also the possibility of doing a, a generic utility using a PSI. Uh, there's a, a program that I've uh, played with a couple of times called CPU limit, which just sends SIG stop and SIG continue to a uh, child process. And uh, based on CPU usage, we can do the same sort of thing for uh, pr uh, pressure. And that can be used for cleaning up uh, builds and re you know, removing old uh, builds and perhaps other things. Uh, so that's it. I do have one more slide about why, why um, make-l, which we're currently using on the Yakuto Auto Builder, is a horrible, horrible thing uh, for efficient builds. Uh, it's, you know, the basic idea is that uh, the black line here is the load average over one minute, which is what you, it make uses, and the uh, red line is the number of tasks. So you can see that as the load builds up, uh, it's because there's too many tasks, and then the task uh, uh, job compilation stops uh, until the pr pressure subsides. But I'm sorry, the uh, CPU usage supply subsides. Uh, but then it, it takes far too long for the average to uh, restore. So we need some other mechanism, either a better load indicator that has you know, responsive over the period of uh, seconds or subseconds, or maybe this uh, proc pressure. Uh, 